Hey there, welcome to the 20th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a way you can implement logical workflows in your code by using conditional statements. The particular statement we'll be covering is the if else statement. The if else statement will allow you to create custom workflows for users by setting conditions, and when a certain condition is met, a specific part of the code is executed, and when another condition is met, another part of the code is executed. Only one will be chosen. Uh, this is a few times. This this is one of the few times where you can actually speak in pseudocode and actually make sense. Like if something happens, do this. If else, do something else. So the syntax of an if else statement looks something like this. So you start out with the the keyword uh, if, and in parentheses you put in a specific conditions. Whether you know if a variable equals to something, if something is greater than something, you can also chain them. So if something is greater than a number and is less than something else, or if it's or greater than something else, etc. We'll take a look at both examples. Uh, execute this piece of code. Else if the second condition is met, execute the second piece of code. So only one will be chosen. Else if the third condition is met, execute the third piece of code. And you can use the else if uh, portion of the if else statement as many times as you want. You can use it twice or a hundred times if you have a hundred different conditions that can be met. And at the end you just do else and you execute the last piece of code. So this is like the default piece of code where if nothing else is met you say this is what happens. And we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, if you've ever done the if else statement in any programming language in the past it's absolutely the same. I would also recommend that you look at my C++ tutorial where I go over the if, uh, the if else statement just for more examples. But let's take a look at one example in JavaScript. Uh, Let's get started. So let's say I have I I, I want to uh, take a price and see if it's you know cheap, expensive, or of value. So let's do uh, I'll just declare a variable called price equals to five five dollars. It can be five cents. It can be whatever. Let's start our if statement. Uh, so if price is less than ten, open and close curly braces. We'll do. Uh, we're going to use the console log for this first example. We'll do console log. It costs less than ten dollars so it must be cheap right doesn't have to make sense so now if the price is less than ten dollars it will execute this piece of code so now let's just update and run it let's open our console log here our javascript console if i run it it executes right because this is the only thing that's met but what happens if i change this to 15 update and run let me get rid of this so you can see that nothing is happening because this uh, condition wasn't met, so this was never executed, and we don't have a default statement. So let's add some more statements. So we'll do else if price is less than or equal to 10, so if it's $10, and price is less than 10, less than 100, do console, console.log, it costs between 10 and $100. So it must be of good value. Again, doesn't have to make sense. So we're saying if this condition is not met, move on to the else if statement. So if the price is less than 10 and is less than 100, so it has to be between 10 and 100, uh, then execute this. So we're we're chaining uh, two different logics into the else if statement. I can keep going with more ands, or I can keep going with more ors, or nots, or equals to. You can add as many as you want here. So now let's do this update and run well my mistake was that it needs to be greater than or equal to 10 because otherwise it's yeah it makes no sense so it, it can't be below 10 and less than 100 at the same time so I mean it can but it needs to be less than uh, it needs to be actually less than 10 so let's just do this update and run there you go it costs between 10 and 100 dollars so not gonna happen so if I change this to 150 if I run it, let's clear the console. If I run it now, nothing happens because, again, none of these conditions were met and there is no default value. So let's add a default value. So we'll do else console.log. Um, it seems too expensive. So what we're seeing is if it's not less than 10 and if it's not between 10 and 100, it must be more than 100. So anything else is just too expensive. Let's run. We have it set at 50. 150. Let's run. It seems too expensive. Uh, let's do 15. It costs between 10 and blah blah blah. Let's just do one, and it costs less than 10, so it must be cheap. So we covered every single condition that can be met, uh, from negative whatever to positive whatever. That's one example. 
of uh, the else if statement. Let's do one more example, and this time we're going to post to the uh, the inner text here. So uh, the idea of this second example is to have a color. Uh, it can be a color of a shirt, of a shoe, of a house, of a car. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just do var color equals to red. Uh, in my HTML, I created a span ID called color here, so we'll be writing to that. So we'll do var output. You can call these variables anything you want. I'm just using it as placeholder. So document dot get element by ID, right color. Now we'll do if color equals to red. Uh, again, the two equal signs is to check is to compare uh, not to assign we'll do output dot inner text equals to red uh, just to make it a little bit more uh, unique we'll do output dot style dot color equals to red uh, again I haven't covered the style uh, the style object yet I will go over it uh, uh, shortly uh, in a future tutorial, but just just to give you an idea of just a little teaser. So else if uh, color equals to blue, let me just use single quotes blue. Then we'll do output dot inner text equals to blue, and output dot style dot color equals to blue. Let me just copy this. Uh, I'll use green, 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 and finally uh, we'll do else. So if it's not either RGB red, blue, or green, or red, green, blue, uh, we'll do output dot inner text equals to uh, something else, just to cover everything, and output dot style dot color. Let's say we'll set this to purple, just for no reason. Okay. So now I have my co color output is red. Again, you can put this into uh, form variables, have your user input something, but we're just hard coding things just to get an idea of what the FL statement looks like. So uh, when we get to our console, I mean, the first code will always run because we didn't comment it out. Let's take a look at what will happen here. So we'll update. Let's run it. There we go. So it costs less than $10, so it must be cheap because we didn't change that. And in the less practice, the color is red. leave it open here so that it's uh, above some of the fold so there you go it's red if I do blue and run it's blue let's do green and run green and one more we'll just do let's say it's a yellow we don't have a yellow condition but we do have an else condition so let's run it and it's something else and it's set to purple well pretty cool right this is the if, uh, else if statements, if else statements, sorry. Uh, and it opens up so many more possibilities with what you can do with your scripts. You don't have to have your script run everything at once. Uh, the one thing, one additional thing I will mention is that once a condition is met in the if else statement, uh, the rest of it is pretty much ignored. So if this first one is run, all of this is ignored. So it saves one time for your script. Uh, whereas if you have a hundred of these and the if color equals to red is always at the bottom, uh, spell, spell yellow, let me correct that now, uh, is all the way at the bottom, it'll actually run through all of these uh, statements before it gets to the last one and then stop executing. So that's one way. That's all I have for if else statements. I hope this tutorial uh, was of help to you. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll look at another conditional statement called the switch statement. And I'll show you why sometimes it may be better to use switch over else if you have uh, a lot of conditions that can be met. Well, thank you for watching. Please remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. As always, I'll link to this fiddle in the comments in the description below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.